Hi Rahul. Hi sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you tell me something about yourself? Yeah, my name is Rahul Rajat Misra. I am basically from Bihar, presently staying in Bangalore. And I have uh, 4.5 years of working experience in testing field. And currently I am working in Tefty Enter Software Solution. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have worked on Java Selenium. Using Java Selenium, I have written the Tefty script and I have used the tools TeftNG, Jenkins, Maven, and GitHub. Okay, great. So what is the difference between uh, POM and Page Factory? So, so POM is a Java design pattern mm -hmm. and uh, which is used to store the objects uh, page wise. And Page Factory is a extended design pattern using which we create the object of the POM class. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we can uh, like, when we create the object of the POM class, then it will uh, initialize that uh, find by find by and find all annotation it will invoke and it will initialize the web element mm -hmm. right so pom it is an approach for design patterns as you mentioned it rightly page factory is a class that is provided by selenium web driver and yes. if it if we come to pom so it is not an actually uh, you can say an optimal method to process the task while page factory is considered to be an optimal method to process the task it is actually a technique to implement pom right then yeah, yeah. by annotation is used to define page objects and in yeah. with respect to page factory it is using find by annotation to describe the page objects yes and also we use page factory dot init element method to right. initialize the web element inside the constructor right right okay now can you tell me something about your automation framework uh, yes sir uh, Actually, we are using hybrid framework. Hybrid mm -hmm. because in this we are using different framework like modular driven framework mm -hmm. because uh, we are storing all the test cases module wise, mm -hmm. and we are also using data driven framework because we are uh, storing data in a separate data folder for mm -hmm. particular test script, and uh, also it is a method driven framework because we are writing the reusable methods that we are using inside our test script. Mm -hmm. So in uh, my framework also we have generic utility class inside that generic utility class we are writing the generic methods mm -hmm. and uh, inside that we have several class like uh, web driver utility java utility file utility and then we have object repository so inside object repository we are creating the form class page wise and uh, the class name we are giving same as the web page name and inside that we are storing the web elements and uh, we are initializing by using page factory dot init element method and these web elements we are calling inside our test script by creating the object of the form class and uh, also we have a data folder where we are storing all the test data and uh, we have uh, resources where we are uh, keeping that uh, the uh, specific uh, Chrome, Chrome driver, driver or Firefox driver, a specific driver, a specific file in the resources to launch the driver. And we also have a screenshot folder where we are uh, taking the screenshot of the failed test cases and we are implementing a I retry analyzer to take the screenshot. And uh, uh, also we have a uh, pom.xml file in that which is the main controller using pom.xml we are executing the programs mm -hmm. the script in the jenkins right what is the version of the selenium jar file that you are using so, uh, selenium 3.14 3.14 okay yeah. now uh, you might be aware that you know latest version has been yeah. launched into the market yes. now let's say yes, if yes. you have to upgrade your framework to the latest version of the jar file then what will you do will it impact your existing automation framework uh, no so we are using maven project so we can just change the version number inside that dependency right. and it will automatically download the latest jar file correct correct great okay now can you tell me the different weights that are available in selenium uh, yes sir so we have uh, implicit weight so for the syntax of implicit weight is uh, driver dot manage dot timeout dot implicitly weight and there we'll give the time mm -hmm. 
Mm. And here we can specify time in a different unit, seconds, milliseconds, hour, days. Mm. And then we have explicit weight. So in explicit weight, we are giving a explicitly weight condition. And here we are using web driver weight. And uh, inside that we are giving the explicitly weight condition. And in explicit weight, we can specify time only in seconds. Right. And uh, yeah, and implicit weight will work only for find element and find elements, mm -hmm. where explicit weight will work for all the methods. All the methods. And um, yeah. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Now let's say if I have to mention some specific condition like element to be clickable or element to be visible, then in that particular mm -hmm. scenario, which weight will you use? No. Explicit weight. Right. Can you tell me the limitations of Selenium? Uh, yes, uh, the limitations of Selenium are like uh, we cannot uh, automate uh, window based pop up mm. or like uh, we have uh, file upload pop up, we cannot automate. And uh, also, Selenium we can use only to automate web, uh, web based application. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Selenium, if we are taking a screenshot, so it will take only in PNG format other formats are not supported Correct. and uh, if we uh, want to take a screenshot of a particular web element that we cannot do using selenium and also using selenium uh, performance testing we cannot do we need to integrate jmeter for that mm -hmm. so these are the limitations in selenium right what is the difference between driver.navigate and driver.get uh, so driver dot navigate if we are using so uh, here we in navigation class we have several methods like driver dot navigate dot two mm -hmm. and uh, we can enter the URL also uh, we can use it to maximize the window mm -hmm. driver dot navigate dot maximize and we can also do forward and backward uh, traversing so we can use driver dot navigate dot forward and driver dot navigate dot backward. And if you are using driver dot get, then only we can enter the URL. It is just similar to like driver dot navigate dot two and then URL, or we can use driver dot get, or you can give the URL. Right. Okay. Now, have you ever faced a situation where, let's say, today you are running one automation script, automation suit, entire automation is running end to end. Tomorrow in the morning, when you come, none of your automation tests are running. There is no change in the build or there is no any new release deployment that has been done by the development team. But all of a sudden your automated tests are getting failed. What can be the possible reason behind this? So, so the possible reason may be like uh, the environment that we are using to run the test cases. Mm -hmm. Maybe there is some issue in the environment. So that's why we are not able to execute the test cases. Mm -hmm. or like uh, maybe uh, the application which is designed for like a particular number of user mm -hmm. and if it is accessed by more than the designed number of user so load will increase so that time also server will crash and we will not be able to uh, execute those applications mm -hmm. so uh, right so one maybe time. like some code breakage will be also there maybe the developers the code that they have written so maybe some code breakage is there that's why it is not working or responding properly mm -hmm. okay what is the difference between agile and scrum uh, sir agile is a practice or method that we are using inside that we have several uh, processes that we are following mm -hmm. so in agile we have a scrum we have Kanban, we have uh, uh, XP, extreme programming. Mm -hmm. So in my project, we are following uh, Agile, uh, Scrum we are following. Sir. Mm -hmm. So in, in that Agile, we have several principles that need to be followed while developing a project. And uh, uh, in my project, we are following a Scrum Agile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. Now, uh, can you share your screen? And I want you to open Amazon.com. And in that, uh, we would be asking you the questions on the finding X path of various elements in that. Okay, let me give you the screen okay. sharing lights. Uh, okay, just open Amazon.com in your uh, laptop. You have joined from laptop, right? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, yeah. Now, can you scroll down a bit? There is a contact us link over there. Okay. Right. So, uh, can you can you find the relative expat for that particular link? Contact us. Contact us. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Just scroll down to the end. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so you might be about us is there yeah yeah about us about us so yeah okay, can you sir. find the relative x path of this particular element okay sir mm -hmm. okay you are using selectors huh oh uh, yes sir i am using that okay how frequently so, are you using it recently i started using that sir but uh, earlier actually uh, entire my project i have you done that manually only okay. okay so if i am just going through that selector hub then that will be very much easy mm -hmm. but uh, yeah right. so yeah. you want to do it manually na, sir right right manually how will you create your relative expert for finding this okay. for clicking on this contact us link okay sir mm -hmm. oh, one minute sir. i think i navigated to another page mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so you are using text method equal to about us okay now yes, let's sir. say tomorrow if this particular amazon uh, content now it is in english language it changes to japanese language or to any other chinese language right then yes, will then then th then this particular expat might fail your automation script might fail right yes uh, characters will be changed so can you uh, get any other relative expat apart from this particular method so like so we can use xpath by attribute we can use this href reference and the uh, link that is given there so using that also we can write sir right right okay now let's say you are uh, running your automation you are logging into the amazon website using your automation only you are adding your adding one of the product into the cart and at the same time you are uh, navigating to the payment tab and end-to-end -end functionality you have automated it you are running your automation every day now one particular day they are changing the entire text to japanese language or chinese language then your automation might fail but in order to prevent your aut automation to fail in such circumstances can you tell me what all precautions will you take in your automation scripts Okay, so in real time, actually, uh, to be honest, I have not done that. But what I can guess is like, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, when we are uh, creating that uh, POM class, so inside that we can use uh, multiple locators using find all annotation. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, uh, if it is in English language, so we can give uh, X path related to that. Inside that find all, we can use multiple find bytes. Mm -hmm. and we can uh, use multiple locators like if one is failing then the other will work so mm -hmm. that i can think of sir okay fine now let's say this particular about us link is there it it might not be there on some particular days it might not be there in some particular regions then how will you take care of such things in the automation uh, sir, i did not get your question please okay. come again Okay, let's say today it's 22nd of January, it's a Saturday, okay, evening time or afternoon time, this particular link is there about us, okay. On Sundays or on uh, holidays, Amazon decides, for example, not to show this about us page, about us link on this particular page, right. Then what will happen, your automation has that particular script of clicking that element, it might fail. 
So how will you make sure that if that link is there, then only you have to run your automation. If that link is not there, then it should not touch this particular automation script. What will be your so in that case, sir, uh, we can use try catch. And if uh, whatever test case we have written, mm -hmm. click on that link so we can put under the try. And if it is not present there, so mm -hmm. it will go to catch block and there simply we will pass that case. Mm -hmm. All right, try catch you can catch the catch. exception. Yeah, exception yeah. handling you will be using over there. Okay, yeah. Now let's come to one more scenario. The moment you click on this about us link, it opens a new window where you have to click. So how will you automate this particular scenario? So in that case, uh, uh, we can use driver dot switch to a statement to switch to that particular window. And uh, we can go to that, the controller will move to that window. And then we can uh, write the test cases or the action, whatever we want to perform on that particular uh, window. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now uh, there was a login button also, right? login link is also there now i want so if you just scroll up a bit yeah 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 there is a sign in button over there sign in button yeah, yeah on the top yeah. it will be yeah yeah yes okay. now instead of uh, typing your e email id or username into the text box it, which are the different methods by which you can send particular that particular text or or implement send keys in automation yes sir. Mm -hmm. so like uh, instead of send keys what other methods that yeah, we can yeah. use to okay right right so, alternative way to send keys in yeah. selenium hmm. okay so sir uh, we can uh, use uh, like um, keys keys class is there Mm -hmm. So we can use a keys class and inside that several methods are there. Mm -hmm. So we can use that. And also we can do it by using robot class. Mm -hmm. We can do that, sir. Okay. Can you write a Java program to find if particular number is a palindrome or not? Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. You can use Notepad, you can use Eclipse, whichever you are comfortable with. Any, any ID. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm using Eclipse. Is it okay, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whichever you are convenient. Yeah, as per your convenience. So, so number, I can take any number or number should be taken by uh, the, uh, we can you use can, uh, scanner can class. Yeah. Uh, 454 as one of the number. Okay. Sir. Right. And then using same program, we'll uh, give some number, which is not actually a palindrome. All right. Sir. Mm -hmm.
dense. Mm -hmm. Right, four five four is a palindrome. Now let's take an example of a number uh, three two one. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Can you explain me this uh, logic that you have implemented? Uh, of course, sir. Mm -hmm. So here uh, we are storing the given number in uh, a variable and uh, inside that int. And then as we need to perform operation on this number, so that's why we are storing in another variable so that later we can compare the number inside temp I am storing that. And here I'm taking a reverse variable where I will store the reverse of that number. And I'm using a while loop here. So this while loop inside that I'm giving the condition as long as the number is greater than zero. So I'm, I'm finding the last digit of that number by using that modulus operator. Mm -hmm. So it will give the last digit. And then after that, I'm uh, storing that last digit in this reverse variable. And I'm writing reverse into 10 plus D. So last digit first time it will get one. So uh, reverse value is 10. So 10 into uh, zero into, sorry, it's zero. So zero into 10, zero and plus D one. So one will be stored in the reverse. And then I'm deleting the last digit uh, by writing num uh, division 10. So again, it will, uh, here I'm updating the condition. It will again go inside this loop and it will check. And now it is three and two. 32 so in 32 is greater than 0 so again it will find the last digit 2 and then again reverse value is 1 now 1 into 10 plus 2 so it will be become like oh, 1 2 and again it will be stored into the reverse and then it, again it will delete the last digit that is 2 again uh, now we have only 3 here so 3 is greater than 0 so again we are getting the last digit and then here we have 12 12 into 10 120 and plus three, so 123. And now again, we are deleting the last digit. So now it is zero, it's not greater than zero, num value will become zero at the last uh, iteration. So, and here we are comparing the value. Right, right. perfect, great. Okay, now you can uh, stop sharing your screen. Let's move to okay, the sir. questions. Mm. Okay, sir. Yeah. What is the use of uh, final keyword in Java? Minutes. Yeah, yeah, no issues. You can. Actually, sir, uh, I'm uh, have you checked to use that go to meeting? So okay. that Zoom link, uh, no I issue. rarely use. Sir. No That's issues. Uh, no issues. Yeah, yeah, you can uh, stop sharing from uh, down over there. You will have some uh, green option. Yeah, uh, uh, you are on mute. Yeah, you just uh, uh, I'm not getting option to just maximize it. Sir. That's that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now mm, I stop. Yeah, now, now, now it's okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. No issues. Sir, so can you tell me uh, what is the use of final keyword in Java? Uh, yes, sir. final keyword uh, we can use for method. Mm -hmm. We can also use for class and we can also use for variable. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we are declaring a variable as final, then we cannot reinitialize that variable. Mm -hmm. It is the final value and we cannot reinitialize that variable. If we are declaring a method as final, then uh, we cannot override that method. That is the uh, final implementation, we cannot override. And if we are declaring a class as final, then we cannot inherit that class. So this is the use of final keyword. Right, now what is the use of wrapper classes in Java? 
So a wrapper class is used to uh, get the object representation of the primitive data type. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the corresponding primitive data type, like for int we have integer, for byte we have byte, and for all the uh, other data types like long, float, uh, we have the respective wrapper class. So wrapper class we use to get the uh, object representation of that uh, uh, primitive data types and also like uh, it is used to uh, if uh, uh, like a number is in a string format so we can uh, use that wrapper class to get the uh, it get it into the uh, integer format from from the string format we can get it into the string uh, integer format mm -hmm. like parse int method is there so using that we can do that Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you mean by auto boxing? Auto boxing is the process of converting a primitive data type into its uh, corresponding wrapper class. Mm -hmm. This process is called auto boxing. Right, right. right. What is Jenkins? Jenkins is a CI CD tool. So we are using in our project Jenkins for continuous development, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Mm -hmm. So continuous development in the sense, like whatever code the developers are writing and we, we are continuously storing those codes in the GitHub and uh, in the Jenkins we have configured it. So Jenkins will download the code from the GitHub and it will check for the compilation issue uh, whether uh, the logic is correct or not, whether the build is broken or not. So for that purpose, we are using, and in uh, automation testing, we are using it for the framework build testing, mm -hmm. where we are continuously, uh, the continuous integration process is happening. All the automation test engineer who are working on the same project mm -hmm. are writing these scripts and we are putting it into the master repo GitHub. And from there, uh, the Jenkins will download the framework build and uh, when when the developers are giving the build so uh, it will deploy into into the testing environment mm -hmm. and it will get the framework build from the github and then it will execute the framework build in the testing environment and after that if we are getting the build successful message if there is no issue then it will deploy it into the uat environment mm -hmm. so in this jenkins we have different types of execution like on demand on scheduling, pole SCM, and Jenkins also support parameter. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Right. Great. So uh, Rahul, I am done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Like, what are the feedbacks that you can give to yeah. further improvement? Yeah. Yeah. Sure.